and then I will substitute the audios later. Alright, go ahead. Not recording. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. I'll just match that when I hear them. And 20 seconds. I'm going to hit this at probably 10. <coughs> All right, Fraggle. 10 seconds uh, and going down. Oh, shit. Yeah, did you? Is it up? It's gone? Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks, and this is it. This is the massive Fukushima update that many of you wait for every month. Um, I want to thank you for watching. As I say every month, this is a responsibility that I take very, very seriously. A lot of people get their Fukushima news from me. So you'll find that I source everything, I tell you where I got it from, and I differentiate from the opinions I give to the facts that I give, even though I would argue they are inevitably tied together. Um, also, please hit subscribe, because a lot of you, I don't think, know that I am, um, I, I cover Fukushima throughout the entire month, it's peppered into the news that is the show, and then once a month, I do the Fukushima update, and of course, it is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, if you're in Canton, Ohio, eat at the Arcadia Grill. Alright guys, Washington's blog, number two Japanese official protest is terrorism, is just Japan sliding back into fascism. Uh, for those of you uh, that uh, don't study history, um, and again this show exists for those that don't normally watch other news programs, um, during World War II it wasn't just the Nazis that were creating a very big problem. Uh, in Germany, but there were other fascist nations, nations that weren't killing Jews during World War II that were not on the side of the Allies. One of those nations is Japan. Um, and Japan was not sending, sending Jews to the concentration camps. However, they had all the other problems inherent in the Nazi system, in their system, during World War II. And uh, I'll wait on that for one second. So, um, it looks as though Japan is moving in that direction once again. And it's important because a lot of you listening are from Japan. I will not stop covering Fukushima for as long as I have this show. And um, you will always be able to count on me. So if you, if you need to go through filters or whatever, um, get a hold of me at uh, the correct views on Hotmail.com if you live in Japan. I will make sure that we have correspondence, even if we have to call each other on the phone. So go ahead, uh, go to the correct views at hotmail.com if you are in Japan. I will get you all of the Fukushima news I can find if I have to call you and give it to you on the phone. Japan will not censor the news I give you. It is on! As we've previously reported, the Japanese government is reacting to Fukushima by introducing a bill which would ban journalism. Try to ban me, swine. The bill has passed the lower house and is expected to pass the upper house this week. A Japanese senator notes, the path that Japan is taking is the recreation of a fascist state. I strongly believe that this secrecy bill represents a planned coup d'etat by the group of politicians and bureaucrats. It says the bill would grant agencies, which no longer even exist, and there's a link, the power to classify secrets. And Japanese officials admit that it will be used to classify what's really going on in Fukushima. Um, and this was in Bloomberg. I'm going to read a piece of this. The entire process has echoes of George Orwell. Uh, he wrote 1984. It was a book about spying and the fall of freedom. If enacted, the secrecy law would allow government ministries to declare just about anything that they wanted as classified. 
it now even appears that trying to cajole information from someone privy to a state secret would warrant jail time. In other words, if I grab a beer with a bureaucrat and ask the wrong question, could I end up in handcuffs? Ambiguity reigns. Yeah, well, everybody in Japan that listens to this show will still have their news. Eat it. Last week, the number two official in Abe's governing Liberal Democratic Party, Shigeru Ishiba, issued a dark warning to anyone like me who might dare to question the bill. In a November 29th blog post, the LDP Secretary General likened any such challenge to an act of terrorism. <clears throat> yeah, well, you can call me a terrorist. I'm not, and I'm doing it. Um, guys, go ahead in there and um, read the rest of it. It, it, it goes on in Bloomberg uh, to prove, I'm not going to read everything about it, but obviously, suffice to say, they're trying to limit the amount of Fukushima news that can reach the people of Japan, and it will not be happening for as long as I have a show. It does say America is no different, and the USA Today peaceful protest is treated as terrorism. There's links to that. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev says that the Chernobyl nuclear accident caused the collapse of the Soviet Union. Again, not, not Reaganism, although I like the man. I didn't say love. Greatly like the man. Um, it was Chernobyl's meltdown that destroyed the economy of Russia. Soviet Union. Is the same thing happening, it asks, to Japan today after the more severe Fukushima accident? After all, nuclear accidents can bankrupt entire nations. It says uh, Japan is about to take a giant step back into its oppressive past. When no one considers Prime Minister's, when one also considers Prime Minister Abe's, Abe's stated ambition to restart Japan's nuclear power plants and remove Article 9 from the Constitution of Japan, the article which prevents Japan from waging war. It seems like the Empire of the Sun may be moving towards darker times. Uh, Japan, uh, for those of you that don't know, after World War II, is not allowed to wage war. They're trying to get rid of that provision. They're trying to limit the amount of information that can go to the people. And part of that information is Fukushima. And again, if you are in Japan, go to the correct views at hotmail.com. We'll exchange phone numbers and you'll get the Fukushima news. Um, for those of you that don't know why any of this matters, why should you be listening? I did this last month. I'm going to do it this month. It's a different video, I think. Uh, this is the effects of new radiation. This is what radiation does to you. It's called uranium mining and radiation affects workers. It's from the 60s. So this is, this is uh, what they're saying is safe, right? All of you uh, want to know what they're saying is safe. Well, here you go. This is what safe is. This is the new great safe. Meanwhile, I'm going to go to prisonplanet.com. Elizabeth Renter, eight signs that Fukushima radiation is blasting the oceans and the U.S., when they tell you that this is a problem that is affecting Japan, they are lying to you. It is affecting a lot more than Japan. And I'm going to go straight to her list of eight here. Um, again, it says that uh, they're admitting that radiation levels are 95% higher than they originally stated. And as we know, each day 300 tons of radioactive water is spilling into the Pacific. Uh, those are two things I can't just gloss over. One, tuna caught off the coast of California are contaminated with radiation. If you are eating seafood right now, you are risking your life. And if you are eating anything from the Pacific Ocean whatsoever, you are destroying your health in the long run. That is not, uh, in my opinion, that is fact. Uh, go ask Christopher Busby, ask Kevin Blanch, uh, ask, uh, go ahead, ask Lauren Moray how much uh, Pacific seafood she's eating today. Um, and for those of you that eat processed food, and let's face it, we all do, I do too, uh, they mix the fish from many different fisheries. So you could be eating fish from many different oceans, and it takes a little tiny piece that you, you know, get stuck in your tooth even, that small, to give you enough radiation, depending on what it is, to give you cancer. That is also true. One test that studied 15 tuna found that all of 15, that would be 100% for you Kesha fans, had radiation contamination above and beyond what is normal for that area. Cesium-134 and cesium-137, which the fish were contaminated with, does not sink to the ocean floor, but rather contaminates the sea at all levels. 
where fish swim through it, ingest it, eat organisms that have already ingested it. Interestingly, the scientists who tested the fish didn't expect to find contamination, and they were proven wrong. All of the tuna. So what do you do? Well, how about you don't eat tuna? <clears throat> um, my dad used to love to watch the movie Kismet, based on the play. And there's a quote in there that says, If it is written that I shall die in Baghdad, then how shall I avoid it? And the other guy says, By staying out of Baghdad, sir. Um, if all tuna is poison, what do you do? You don't eat tuna. Shazam, Sparky. Two, something is causing herring to bleed from their girls' bellies and eyeballs, according to Canada.com. Herring. Oh, herring's safe. Yeah, let's all say for this. <clears throat> it's believed these symptoms could be a sign of viral hemor hemorrhagic septicemia that could spread into salmon and other, other fish varieties. While not proven to be linked to Fukushima radiation, there is little doubt that radiation could be impacting immune function in fish, leading to higher rates of the disease. Let's remember what radiation does. It lowers your immune system, and that's what we're seeing in these fish. Um, sockeye salmon populations at historic lows. If you think this is all hogwash, why are all these different studies from different people finding the same things? Recreational and non-aboriginal fisheries in an area of British Columbia have been shut down due to record low numbers of sockeye salmon. Fukushima radiation may be to blame. Yeah, in other words, they're not able to breathe, and they're dying, and they're weak, and they're sick. Four, radiation, radiation off West Coast is expected to double in the coming years. Projections from German oceanographers estimate radiation levels from Fukushima will cause continued increases in West Coast contamination for the next five to six years. Right there. That's how it gets you, people. From eating this and breathing it. That's why I'm doing this. Quit eating fish. Take fish oil, or QQ10 if you can't take fish oil, if you're allergic to it. Five, fish imported from Japan is already contaminated. The Vancouver Sun, and there's another conspiracy, there's another source, so they're also, you're good, it's all in our heads, right? The Vancouver Sun tested fish imports from Japan and found cesium-137 at alarming rates, contaminating 75% of the mackerel 91% of halibut, 92% of sardines, 93 tuna, and 92 cod and anchovies. 100% of the carp, seaweed, shark, and monkfish. Carp eat what sinks to the bottom. Well, they're releasing it into the ocean and it'll all absorb. No, it'll sink like a rock. The carp will eat it and be 100% infected. Six. Radioactive plume expected to reach U.S. coastal waters soon. Friends, it has already hit here lightly. It's coming at its worst. A large plume of radiation as a link is expected to begin flowing into the coastal waters in the beginning of 2014 and continue throughout 2016. If we're only this far as seeing the tip of the iceberg, what's to come could be truly frightening, as you're seeing. Lastly, eight. We see very high levels of cancer along the West Coast due to contaminated fish consumption. Look at what's going on. They're dumping huge amounts of radioactivity into the ocean. No one expected that in 2011. Daniel Hirsch, another source. A nuclear policy lecturer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, to told Global Security Newswire, we could have large numbers of cancer death from ingestion of fish. So don't say that the fish is safe. I just spent 10 minutes telling you why you're going to end up juiced. Um, and this is also Prison Planet. Mikhail Phelan, awesome author, by the way. Awesome writer. Underwater footage reveals melting sea star epidemic. There's a video on this. You're going to want to watch it. Following the discovery of a melting sunflower sea stars off the coast of California, Washington State and Canada videographer and underwater explorer Laura James uncovered over 100 dead sea stars washed up on the beach in Seattle's Brace Point earlier this month. After diving into the water to investigate, James reveals to StoryLeak just how devastating the die-off has become. There's more sources. But Sam's crazy, right? 
I've heard that the sea stars were dying in mass, but this was beyond my imagination, James said. It's like carnage or a mass grave, a dead and dying sea stars, body on top of body. James's footage, which begins by showing unaffected sea stars in the same area a year prior, reveals that multiple sea star species this year have begun to literally disintegrate despite earlier reports of only one species being affected. Couldn't have anything to do with that 300 tons of nuclear water going into the ocean every day, could it? These sunflower sea stars were the first to die, and it happened very fast. The ochre and modded sea stars are now dying, and these are the bodies that you see piling up. He's found all stages of the melting all over in different areas around the same site. It says, unexplained sickness and death from species all across the West Coast since the beginning of Japan's 11 nuclear disaster have increased the public's fear that the situation's true danger is being kept under wraps. And we just covered in the first story exactly how they're aiming to do that to a greater degree. It says, as far back as 2012, that nuclear radiation from Fuku power plant was being detected in bluefin tuna off California's coast. Months earlier, cesium-137 was being found in almost all Japanese seafood being sold to Canada. And, of course, they just kept selling it. Uh, friends, do yourselves a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do so, go straight to the $5 wallet savers because this is awesome. This is awesome. You have a lot of money to spend this Christmas? Well, great. A lot of people don't. Three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight, $2.99. Never have to worry about buying batteries again. It cranks, it works, done. Um, the emergency sl survival sleeping blanket. This is awesome. $1.99. You might say, what do I need a survival blanket for? I don't know. Did you, you have so much money for Christmas that you want a Porsche, right? A Rolls Royce? Well, if your car might break down, or anyone that you love owns a piece of rolling garbage, then you might want to get them the emergency sleeping blanket. You know what? You won't freeze to death while you're waiting for the tow truck. And you can laugh if you want, but I don't think my elderly listeners are laughing. They're going to TheMediaSpeaks.com, and they're clicking on Bud K. That way you support The Media Speaks, and you get great merchandise. Tons of gifts here. Five dollars. So go and check them out. Uh, friends, i got a few more stories I'm going to get to. E&E &E News. Die-offs of mammals, birds, reptiles in western U.S. So many diseases afflicting such a wide variety of animals, names out of sci-fi thriller. Hemographic disease, sylvatic plague, as studies now underway to find out why, and there is a video for it. Um, <clears throat> and again, uh, my friends in Japan, you've already had studies of this happening there. It's already happening in the U.S. So if I mention a story that's happening in the U.S., you guys are getting juiced even worse than we are. So I mean... Think about how bad it is. You need to get out of Japan. Uh, Billings Gazette, November 18th, 2013, Jaron Jensen said he and his father, Mike, have seen up to 100 dead deer at a time along the, Miss, the Muscle Shell River. Die-offs have whittled the once hardy deer herds down to a handful. I've only seen three does this year. It used to be when I was hanging along the river early in the morning, I'd see two to 500 head in the meadows. The names sound like something out of a science fiction thriller, and it's a bunch of really awful diseases. Uh, blue tongue, and I'm not going to read some of these eye charts. Go look the article up. It's, uh, it's bad. Yeah. It's, it's disease. Some of them don't even know what they are. Uh, Episodic hemographic disease. I don't know what that is. Um, blue tongue. I do know what that is. It affects the whole mouth. Um, the sylvatic plague. I think that's a disease like the black plague. It spreads among deer. The other, I don't know. Um, chronic wasting disease, that speaks for itself. Yet the all-too-real afflictions threaten to reduce the population of wild mammals, birds, and reptiles across Montana, Wyoming, and other regions. Oh, but mankind's not going to be affected, right? We're immune. There is a general consensus among scientists that we are seeing more disease, said Jonathan Sleeman, director of the U.S. Geological Survey's National Wildlife Health Center in Madison, Wisconsin. So many diseases afflicting such a wide variety of animals, a study is being conducted in northwestern Montana to examine the possible causes. Uh, independent record. I'm going to read one more. What's happening to all the moose? 
Moose in the northern United States are dying in what scientists say may be the start of climate shock. The die-off is most dire in Minnesota, where ecologists say moose could be gone for within a decade. Concerns have prompted a 10-year study of moose in Montana. It's not just in Montana, either. An aerial survey of moose in northern Minnesota earlier this year showed a 52% drop in the population since 2010, which prompted the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources to completely call off the 2013 moose hunting season. Uh, there's more on that article. I'm sure you get the point. Uh, Nick Desser in Moose the in the Missoula-based lead biologist on the Montana study. About one third of our animals have no fat on their rump. That was in the winter, so that's a pretty big deal. Are lean animals dying, not giving birth to cows, or could they just be leaner this year? This is what is blowing into our nation's friends from Fukushima. This is from uh, skirp.org. Uh, the Open Journal of Pediatrics. Uh, let me find Chris Busby's article here. I've been trying to get Chris Busby on the media speaks or the correct views forever. If any of you know Busby, is there any way that you could get him on this show? I'm going to go ahead and just read you the abstract here. Um, Changes in confirmed plus borderline cases of congenital hyperthyroidism, cancer of the thyroid could be developing from that, in California as a function of environmental fallout from the Fukushima nuclear meltdown. The authors are Joseph Mangano, Jeanette Sherman, and Christopher Busby. Can somebody get him on this show? Abstract. <clears throat> <clears throat> Radiation exposure has been linked to increased risk of congenital hyperthyroidism for decades. CH is a relatively uncommon condition occurring about one in every 2,000 U.S. birth. Thyroid stimulating hormone, further uh, TH, TSH, levels for each child born in California permitted an analysis of combined confirmed and borderline CH cases. Borderline confirmed CH cases are more than seven times greater than just confirmed cases. Airborne levels of gross beta nuclear radiation in the U.S. were elevated in the period starting several days after the Fukushima nuclear meltdown, especially in the West Coast states like California. Sam, are you saying we should move from California? Yes! The borderline confirmed CH rate of newborns during the last 9.5 months in 2011 exposed to Fukushima in utero versus birth during other periods in 2011 and 2012 not exposed <clears throat> was significantly elevated, suggesting that adverse health effects to the newborn thyroid were not restricted to just a small number of confirmed CH cases. The sensitivity of the fetus to radiation exposure plus the presence of thyroid-seeking radioiodine suggests further analysis of Fukushima's potential to cause adverse health effects in newborns is needed. There's more facts coming. I got two more stories. This is from Voice of Russia. I'm also doing uh, part two on this tomorrow. Fukushima update. I said if you guys watched it, I would keep doing them. You have been watching them and you will find that I'm going to stay on this. You I, I'm with you, people. A uh, Fukushima nuclear disaster causes cancer and birth defects in U.S. News, U.S. newborns. Epidemiologist. This is the voice of Russia. How many different sources can I give you? And then you question whether or not this is my opinion. After the disaster at the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan, little attention was paid to how the radiation leaks can affect the health of children who live in the U.S. Joseph Mangiano, I, I just read his study, the epidemiologist and executive director for radiation and public health project research groups speaks with the voice of Russia about the study that showed kids born after 2010 have a 26% higher risk to have cancer and birth defects, but the U.S. keeps silent on the problem. I'm cutting out the words that's telling me about the disaster. A wave hit, yes we know. We just published a study in the Ocean Journal of Pediatrics. We looked at official two types of data. One was the EPA statistics on how much radiation was in the air in the weeks and months after Fukushima, and it was much higher in the West Coast than it was in the rest of the country. And number two 
we looked at the state California's official statistics on newborns who were born with a condition called hyperthyroidism. <clears throat> and I, again, it's, uh, the thyroid is underactive. Um, the Fukushima nuclear disaster is quite harmful to human health. Although it happened in Japan, all the way across the ocean, the contaminated waters and polluted air can easily reach the continent on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Studies almost three years ago found that the plume of radiation that escaped from Fukushima arrived on the west coast in the U.S. just five days after the initial meltdown. <clears throat> it doesn't take long. Once these radioactive particles and gases get into the air, it moves along with prevailing winds and keeps traveling until it returns to the environment through the rain and the snow, says Joseph Mangiano. It circled the entire northern hemisphere, but it got to the west coast within five days and came into the environment in greater amounts on the west coast than anywhere else in the country. But you guys said I was nuts when I said that you should move! The aim of the study is to find the correlation between the increased cases of hyperthyroid disease in children and the consequences of FUKU. It says, in the future, more children would be born with diseases <clears throat> and other health problems caused by Fukushima. Uh, according to Mangiano, some people would be born not just with birth defects, but with diseases affected by the radiation, such as cancer. We're looking at not just hyperthyroids, though, but infant death, babies born underweight, babies were born prematurely, things that nature to, <clears throat> things that nature to see before and after Fukushima if there is a difference. Recently, Japan has surveyed 200,000 children near the Fukushima plant in 2012, and it's found 56% of the children under the age of 18 have precancerous lesions, which is absolutely off the charts, as it should be almost none. Statistically, it's hard to find 1%. Now you're finding 56% already, precancerous lesions. They're going to turn to cancer, quite possibly. It's an ongoing study by Fukushima Medical University. Uh, they found as many as 59 kids had thyroid cancer, and that's a condition that's very rare in kids. We would expect in three years, maybe one or two. Only. They confirmed 26, and they suspect another 33. So this is just the beginning. As research the community, we really need to look at this meltdown seriously. I would say so. Guys, last thing I want to get to, the Golden Dumdy Award. If, if I was going to give... Uh, if I was going to give the Dunce Cap of the Month award to other nations, these boneheads, uh, I, I, and the reason I'm not giving it the Dunce Cap of the Month award also is because I'm concerned that this would have been stolen to be a dirty bomb. And if that's the case, then they're not stupid, they're malicious and evil. My gut tells me, although they both could be, I'll tell you why in a minute. My gut tells me that these are some hood G, yo. Some uh, cholos, I think, is the word for these uh, gangbangers that think that they're hard on the Mexican border because they sell drugs. Ooh. Uh, it looks like they stole this truck, which is... Uh, thieves in Mexico stole a truck of extremely dangerous radioactive material that could be used as a dirty bomb. Business insider. Uh, my gut instinct tells me these are a bunch of know-nothing G hood rats that are just boneheaded. They're going to open this up and start glowing. Uh, but they could very likely get it stolen by somebody that does know what they're doing, in which case it could be used as a dirty bomb either way. Uh, it looks like the best case scenario is that these uh, cholos are going to go ahead and take their new truck. Uh, hopefully they'll take it to one of these underground uh, places they like to torture people in, and they'll open it so that it won't juice anybody to a great degree but them. Um, this is bad for a couple reasons. We know this happened in Brazil. It happened so badly that they had to bury uh, the little girl that got radiated in a lead, a lead casket. Uh, it is that bad. There isn't also very many nuclear disasters going on in the Southern Hemisphere, and if Fukushima goes bad, the entire world will have to live in the Southern Hemisphere in order to live at all. So we're running into a bit of a problem here because... Um, this is creating a nuclear disaster again, and not like Fukushima, but it could create a nuclear disaster in the southern hemisphere once again. Uh, again, it's in Mexico right now, so I mean, that's, that's not on the chart immediately. A truck carrying a dangerous radioactive medical equipment used for cancer treatments was stolen on Monday in Tepoyoco near Mexico City, BBC reports, by a bunch of boneheads. 
The material could, in theory, be made into a dirty bomb that could spread the radioactive material over a wide area. In other words, they just blow it up and let the uh, radioactive radioactivity fall where it may. Um, Agence France Press notes that experts have long warned about the danger posed by the large amounts of such material held in hospitals and other locations around the world under insufficient security. Well, there you go. The truck was transporting a Cobalt-60 teletherapy source from the hospital in northern city to Tijuana to a radioactive waste storage center when the 2.5-ton Volkswagen worker was stolen at a gas station, according to local media, uh, by a bunch of idiots. Uh, when this happened in uh, Brazil, they weren't necessarily idiots because it wasn't labeled properly and these were people doing scrapping. Uh, obviously, they should not have been in there because they were scrapping in a place they weren't allowed to be in. But it was in a closed-down facility, so they weren't harming anybody. But what they did is they stole a radiation machine, opened it up, saw a pretty blue glowing substance, uh, fed it to their daughter, saw her tongue glue there had intercourse in front of it. The whole community had cancer and death wastes and uh, people dying within hours, days. Uh, this led to better labeling. These boneheads knew exactly what they were stealing. They are very, very stupid. Or very malicious. Uh, last paragraph. At the time the truck was stolen, the source was properly shielded. Properly shielded. However, the source could be extremely dangerous to a person if removed from the shielding or if it was damaged. The Internal Atomic Energy Agency said. So there you go. There's your boneheads at the end of the Fukushima update. Friends, thank you for listening to the correct views. Uh, subscribe. And there will be a part one and a part two. They will be up two days in a row. I'll be doing one tomorrow. Um, Subscribe, go to themediaspeaks.com, look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. And if you like what I'm doing, please donate to me. The correct views of hotmail.com. Any money you give me goes towards a better show. And uh, again, I'm here for you guys. Uh, you guys in Japan, we'll trade numbers, you'll get your news. Good night, friends. God bless.